My name is um, Sikula Fonua. I am um, 51 years old, going to be 52, but 51 at the moment, they say. Yeah. So, I am the town officer here. So, my main job is to take care of this, uh, look after this uh, community. We're trying to look after people, not too overfishing and then not taking this um, undersized fish because kind of thing like that, if we take care of that, this um, is good for this uh, for the future. So that's my job to look after this, um, the whole community of this island here. I take care of these uh, people um, of the community more than my family. All the people here know how to fishing. There's uh, money to be coming for this um, for the village here. That's from the sea. They do fishing, and then get here, take a little bit for the family, and take the rest to sail in the market. When we growing up, it is is uh, quite good fishing on this um, coastal area here. So, and then people from some other village came over here. So, they don't very really care about the people on the community of the island here. So, they, that's why this, uh, the fishing is getting uh, less, because they taking, overtaking. There is hard time for us on that time, the people suffered. When communities develop rules for them to manage their fisheries resources, it's the best approach because they will follow those rules. Instead of someone outside coming and telling them what to do, most of the time it's not, um, it doesn't have any positive outcomes because it's driven by outside. So community-based fisheries management is all about community-driven approach. For Tonga, they come up with an idea of how they could encourage, motivate community to take a lead role in managing the coastal resources. They call it a special management area. It's a homegrown program uh, by the fisheries division together with, uh, with the communities. They develop their special management areas. In other words, they develop um, management rules that help manage their coastal resources uh, with the community taking the leading role. So they, they go through a lot of planning and consultations whereby they identify threats uh, they identify the possible solution to those threats and they came up with, with management rules that communities have agreed as a whole to, to, to follow in order for those resources that have been exploited to recover uh, and also for the long-term sustainability of their coastal resources. Eh, time ko na lafua ay atahi. Time ko mau ko ay mahino ka mau tol o alu ikay ay kefitu to loloto ang. Iyo ay ako ko magfulahi pe kakai buho hipo kita yo tautai tautai aho tautai po uli tautai aho tautai po uli. Mui kakai ke he kehe pe i tongan ka toa ngo fua ke ha o tau tai o mau kolo. Na mau kau ke he programa pe tu pule ima ke he, ua fe taha fitu. Ga he he te programa e sa ema e i pe fe tu pule ima ke he, o ki kai ke ngo fua ke toe hu mai ha ha kakai me tua. Ia tak ini mahu aku aku fikir fikir aku itu mau mau ke kakai. Tahu tu fikir ke ke kau tahu tak? Aku mahu awak seni, aku mahu nak seni, mahu mahu mukai nak family. Perfai ngofu lah, tahu tak? Perfai.
Good morning everyone. I am uh, William Sukimi with the SPC Sustainable Livelihood Section and I'm the Fisheries Development Officer. It's good to be here again and it's, uh, I'm glad to be uh, able to come and help with you all. I hope we have an uh, enjoyable two weeks and uh, the weather suits our purpose, so thank you. The small fishing operation training is for boat operators who uh, who have been doing lagoon fishing, inshore fishing, and who, like with SMAs, they want them to diversify, to move offshore. So we get to come and show them the offshore fishing methods and uh, boat handling skills and the requirements for going offshore so that if the need arises, they can move offshore to do offshore fishing for pelagic, la larger fish, uh, and to do it safely. So if you think of it, life jacket is hard to work with when you're fishing. So when the boat is moving, we must all have a life jacket. Because this is a time where that life jacket is very important to be worn. Because when you are traveling at high speed, if something happens and the boat flips, you fly out of the boat. There's no, you know, if that happens, there's no time to reach in the boat and try to grab a life jacket to put it on or to search for life jacket after that. Every project, every training I go and I do, it has its sort of own flavor. Yes, I have many good ones. You know, we have a good time during the training and, you know, everything goes according to plan, which most of them do. And uh, then they're all memorable in their own way. Some of you, I know, you will be winding like this and you... Eh? then you turn because it's too heavy or too eh? so your winding will be square wind boom boom like it and it's clicking I'm conscious that I'm dealing with fishermen. You know, fishermen too are proud, eh? like everybody wants to be a good fisherman. We're all professors of fishing. So I try to make it like we do it together as a group. Uh, we share ideas and these, I have some ideas that I can share with you and uh, you may be familiar with some of my ideas and maybe some you don't uh, know and hopefully I can learn from you too. My name is Shola'a uh, Marimari, uh, deputy CEO for Ministry of Fisheries and uh, head of um, Fisheries Science Division. Changing of the fishing method in Tonga, it's, it's, uh, it's a need uh, since the um, coastal fisheries resources uh, have been overfished here in Tonga. Uh, and if we continue to uh, use the same fishing method, it will continuously uh, deplete the, uh, the fishery stock. I buy fish from the fishermen, but now it's very small. Eh? The fish is more expensive now than before. The people fishing too much. Uh, with regard to food security, it is an issue. Uh, because people, uh, when we have less fish available, or uh, people afford to get uh, to, to have fish for, for food, uh, they will be shift and eat the uh, imported um, uh, like meat, uh, chicken, which, which, which is uh, the problem for, for, for the people's uh, health. It links to um, to, um, to those um, diabetes or other NCDs um, uh, issues. There, there, there is an issue with that. This training is very important to me because it's a new method they, they show to us. So soon I come back here, I try to be explain to people um, this uh, new method. I think they may get the one big fish. So getting more fish is um, getting more money for this um, for the family. This training uh, will improve. I, I, I think it will improve the uh, the, the fishermen's um, uh, livelihood. Because they will go out further away from the reefs area, they will improve their 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 catch. The catch rate will be increased. It will improve their livelihood in terms of food security. If you're going to do a full length, 
and this thing is like this and covered under all that and you try to pull very hard. So in that case, if you've got a longer whipping to do, there's two ways to do it. You do a glove hitch or a constrictor knot. I have uh, seven children. Uh, I would like them to live in um, uh, a better uh, country with, uh, yeah, with a healthy food. Um. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's what uh, that's what I, I, I need for for my children to uh, to have. Yeah. My father is a town officer for. Um, Almost 40 years, we're starting a fight for the um, a management um, area for for us. So he passed away, and then the time for me to come up and then pushing um, SMA to be done. I have two um, grand daughter. My dream for the future for them is like my father uh, dream to us to be keep pushing the people and not overfishing trying to be growing up to be a much, much better people and I'm proud of that.